Hello, if you're out there, I'm just going live just a just a little touch early, just to let everybody kind of join in with us today. Whenever you uh, come on, I see a few people jumping on. Let me know who you are as you jump on. <gasps> Deborah Terrell. Hey, Deb. How you doing? Oh, are you a special person in our world? Except that these days, those sassy little babies that you helped us, that you carried so we could have a family. Um, in fact, maybe one day I, you'd let me call you and we can talk about, you know, what it was like going through the, the whole process of surrogacy. That would be fun um, because we had such a wonderful, wonderful experience with it and you were even nice enough to do it a second time for us uh, what were we thinking <laughs> but um, they're all teenagers now and I, I'm happy to say that they're here in the house and they are they're just doing so great you know they they just totally get the whole thing they buy into it they aren't asking to go anywhere Maybe Jack wants to stay up a little late on his fortnight or whatever, but the kids are just uh, amazing. Um, and hey, uh, we've got Cheryl Unger Frost, um, who's saying, hey, Cheryl, you're saying hi to Elise. Yep, I see hi Elise on here. Hey, Laura Shackness, you're going to love today, Laura. I understand you're having one heck of a blizzard up there in Maine. I was speaking with my daughter, Jamie, last night. She and her husband, George, they like escaped New York City and went up to our house there in Maine on beautiful Long Lake. And they've been up there and so happy that they're up there. And she called and said, so all the power just went out. But then it came back on like a minute later. I said, yeah, my husband put in the biggest old generator up there so you don't have to worry. Um, Beth O'Malley, hey Beth, how you doing? Beth has a son, Jimmy, who is great friends with my teenagers and he comes to camp at Camp Tahoe every year. He's just the nicest, nicest young man. Uh, Beth did a fabulous job on him. Um, and I, it's interesting, I'll have to talk to you, Beth, because Beth is a sci psychologist, a therapist, um, and I have to imagine she's got clients calling her and she's doing a whole bunch of phone sessions right now. We'll have to talk about that one. And and Deborah, my surrogate, she says she'd love to talk about it anytime. All right, terrific. We'll, we'll do that one day here. Hey, Susan. Susan uh, Peratt joining us from Tel Aviv. See, now I've got to come to know you. You don't even have to tell me. It's nighttime there. What you cooking for dinner, huh? Um, Elise joining us and saying hi to Cheryl. Jeanette Persons saying hi from North Dakota. Uh, Sharon Sneering uh, from Bluebell in the suburbs of Philly. Ooh, I just heard that Philly's like another hot spot now. Be really careful when you bring those groceries home. Lysol, Lysol, your Lysol. Uh, Carol Smith saying hi. Um, Debbie Schroeder, you're loving these. Great. Um, Beth Malik. Carol Drew, another person up there in, in Maine. Is it like snowing in the blizzard outside of your house? Uh, we'll be talking about that a little bit more uh, in just a little bit. Uh, Gail uh, Rappaport from Minneapolis. Uh, Tristan Alexis. Um, all right. Well, oh, there's there's a whole bunch. Of, okay, there's 128 of you right now. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. I'm, I can't say hi to everybody right now, but I'll try to get people every day. So... I'm still in my room there I was yesterday. Oh, I just noticed. You see that little uh, pink thing up on the ceiling? That's where my boys come along and they take a little post-it note. There's a few more of them around my room and they jump to see who can paste, you know, post one on the wall higher than the last one. And that's just high enough. I haven't been able to get it down. My boys are really getting super, super, super tall now. Um, it is, uh, what, Good Friday. It's April 10th, so uh, my best wishes out to everyone celebrating Passover. This is going to be an unusual Easter weekend. I found a really good throwback 
picture uh, for Sunday. So watch for it. It'll be my throwback Easter picture. Um, can we just talk about roots for a minute? And, and I'm talking about roots. Check it out. Like we've all got these, right? How long do you think it'll be before we, and, and I'm not willing to try to do it myself um, because my guy just like puts like some kind of a little not not um, chemical based lightener on my roots and I, I'm just not ready to do that. But anyway, today we're going to be talking to one of the most awesome ladies in my life and it's Beth Belot. She's from up in Maine. She is a mom. She's a grandmother. She's a fitness trainer. She's a life breath um, instructor. She uh, does tapping. Remember we talked about tapping the other day? Right after I did it, she said, oh my gosh, I love doing tapping. She had just done a session with the, I guess the HR department of the state of Maine. Um, but speaking of the state of Maine, I don't know if anybody has seen it in the news, but they are dealing with one heck of a blizzard right now. So, and electricity has gone out all over, I guess the Southern state of Maine. I don't know where it's hitting the hardest. I just know that when I was talking to my daughter last night, she said, you know, the power just went out. Oh, wait a minute, came back on. That's because of a terrific generator. Um, but Beth, we've had her slotted in to talk today about what you can do at home and how important it is right now to stay um, you know, to stay fit. Um, however, she lives somewhat off the grid. They bought like a mountain and I don't know how many acres and they have their own solar power and a generator and like they're kind of off the grid. Um, I think basically because they're a couple of grown up now, grown up hippies. <laughs> she's probably laughing if she's hearing this, but she might not be because she's in her car. Here, watch this. I just talked to her a little while ago. Um, she has no internet connection at her house. And there she is. Hi, Beth. Hi there, how are you? I'm doing okay. Wanna say hi to everybody here? Let's see how I can get you pro properly on the screen. Say hi to all my, my group, my groupies. Hi everybody, so great to, to be with you. From a blizzard. Excited. Is it snowing outside your window? It, it, I'll sh I can show you real quick. It's finally uh, getting a little better. Can you see the snow? <laughs> oh, the snow stopped. Woohoo! No, it's not snowing now, but uh, we got about a foot. And um, that knocked out our cell service as well as our telephone service. So, so how far did you, I know, I see you're in John's truck, you, which you probably have to be driving right now in order to be with yes. us. Yep, I kind of imagined that one. Here, let me get you back in screen a little better. So, um, that was the only, how far did you have to drive? Did you drive to Andover? Yeah, it's only it's only about 10 minutes from the house. All right. We're, we're parked between the school and the library. So, luckily, somehow we get service here. So, here we are. Absolutely. And um, you... Uh, I want to talk though this morning because we're talking to a whole bunch of people here who are stuck in their houses. Um, some of them are in crazy weather like you and here it's been pouring rain. Now it's unbelievably windy. We've had wind here in the New York area, the, you know, the tri-state area so bad that it's taken down trees and, and power lines. So there's a lot of people around us also who have no power. And I mean to be stuck in your house and 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 no power, um, you know it's it's a real challenge for a lot of people today. And when it comes to trying to stay fit, Beth, I think most people would agree with me. It's hard to to make um, make it a habit to get it to put it somewhere in our daily schedule. And I'm talking when life is normal. When life is normal, it's hard to. You always say, don't just try to grab it here or grab it there, because then you're going to say, oh, I missed my workout, so what the heck for today, that it's better to have it as a habit. How how do we do that in our life today when we got our schedules just kind of ripped out from under us? Yes, I hear you. So, you know, a couple things about that. One is, I think it's even more important 
to put it on your schedule because life is so haphazard right now. And so everybody's different as far as what time of day they like to work out. I'm a, I'm a morning worker outer. Um, I worked for many, many years in the evenings teaching, but my favorite time has always been the morning. So I know that that's when I have the highest energy. Some people, it's vice versa. So you want to figure that into the equation. Then another very important part of a habit is I think it's very essential to know the why behind a habit. You know, are you working out because you care about weight and your looks? Are you working out because you want to feel strong? Are you working out because of the high that it gives you and you're getting endorphins and it makes you just feel great? So I think now, more importantly than ever, is for us to stay healthy because if we do get sick, whether it be the flu or a virus or the things that life throw at us, wouldn't it be great on a scale from 1 to 10 to be up in those higher numbers so that yeah. if we do get sick, we're, we're able to fight that off? So that's really true. I don't know if I had actually thought about it in that sense, but you're right. And I guess we have to make sure that we have good lung capacity you know so you know, yeah cardio strength all that is important you know we talked about breathing exercises but yes we want those lungs healthy the heart healthy so what what would you suggest what's an easy way during this crazy time or even a regular time what do you suggest we do to try to put fitness into our brain in a different way that it's going to slot in at a certain time because you've talked to me about making the same thing obviously if you go to the gym that's fabulous but for everyone that just wants to try to get it in so that they remember what what's an easy way to do that so uh so you're right i want to make a point about the gym part too yeah we don't know we don't know when we're going to be going back to gyms yeah you know, I mean, it may be for quite some time. Yeah. So, so you're right, having having that schedule. And we've talked before about, you know, keeping it simple and keeping it short. Yeah. I'd rather people be salivating for more rather than just going, you know what, I just can't do this. I can't commit to 30 minutes or 45 minutes or an hour, whatever that threshold is for you. So we've talked about, you know, the 20, 20, 20, 20 thing that you do, Yeah. Uh, you know, Every morning, you get up and, and you make sure that you do 20 squats and 20 lunges, push-ups, 20 sit-ups, sit -ups, and I, I like sumo squats too. And, and that point being is I, I work with a lot of uh, very high-end uh, CEOs of, of, of huge corporations all over the world, and so many of them have done this. They wake up and religiously have this 15-minute regimen that they do that they say is a lifesaver. It clears their heads. It makes them start the day that way. Um, and by the way, anybody who has questions for Beth, uh, you can uh, let me know. Um, you know, uh, if, you're, if you're going to have that weekly regimen, are there certain components that you should just make sure you get in like i i mean i really really can't stand it when i don't do some kind of sit-ups when i used to be a good morning america in the morning we've talked about this in the morning sometimes i'd be completely dressed and then i would remember that i didn't do anything but i would lie down on the floor i my dressing room was carpeted and i would just do some sit-ups and then I would stand up and I'd, I'd do them, you know, kind of standing like obliques because I found that if I did that, I sat up better in the chair that I sat in. And people used to say, wow, you have such good posture. But if I didn't do those, you, you just kind of slump in your chair. We had this guy who came on one time. I don't remember his name right at the moment. Um, he was a, a an anchor, like he was somebody from ABC News, and he happened to be filling in for Charlie. He said, "My wife told me that you, Joan London, sits up so straight 
and you're so much shorter than her, you better sit up or you're going to look like a, a little, <laughs> a little tiny squatty guy. They actually, the, the stagehands heard him saying this to me and they ran and got this board and they took the cushion off of his chair and put a board down and then put the cushion on top of it so he would sit up a little higher but it is true i mean the core even if people are having like a sore back right now and that can come from i don't mean to say this the wrong way but from like laying around watching a whole lot of netflix series um and your back can get sore like when you don't do anything you get kind of achy all over um and if you work on that ab, that can help your back, right? Yeah. You know, we are animals that are meant to move. And I'm sure you've all noticed that the more you sit, you, you know, you, if you don't use it, you lose it. Yeah. And I, can, I think a lot of back problems are from sitting. Yeah. And so, yeah, so movement is important. So, yes, I, I, I think uh, in, a, in a week span, it's important that we do some core work. It's important that we do weighted strengths because, especially for women, because of osteoporosis. So that did, can be to your do body. what? What did you just say to do what? Weighted. Make sure that we, make sure that we do some kind of strength training ah. because of osteoporosis, and and also not, because your your arms look terrible in t-shirts during the summer. They're, Absolutely. They keep Don't saying you. goodbye after you've stopped saying goodbye. <laughs> right. Do you remember we used to teach a class, uh, Joan, at uh, Camp Radley that said, you know, flabby arms be gone. Yeah. <laughs> right. So what do we do? What do we do then? Um, because it is going to be summertime. And even if we can't go with friends, we can be in our backyard and, and we want to wear T-shirts. So how, what, how do we work a little bit on our, our arms? So, um, so actually, I have some, something to show you. I brought a set of weights with me today. They are <laughs> cans of soup. And so, you know, there's no reason that you don't have everything you need in a home gym. And so doing some strength training, if you don't have dumbbells, we've got, you know, heavy things. You can use bottles of wine or bottles of vodka, whatever, whatever you have laying around. Yeah, I heard and that a bottle of wine generally weighs about two pounds. That's if, yeah, it's, even, that's if it's full. <laughs> that's if it's full. You can always fill it with water. No one will Oh, know. that's true. <laughs> yes. So you can always do that. But, um, you know, I think, you know, you, you, you want to do some strength training. And also that keeps your muscles, not that women want to look muscular, but we know the, the, that strong is the new sexy. So we want to have some definition in our arms, in our, in our shoulders, our triceps, in our legs, in our core. So we want to make sure that we do some strength training for looks and for health. Now, all of that being said, you cannot out-train a lousy diet. All right. You've always told me that it's what? 20? 80-20. And so to explain what 80-20 is. Yeah, it's, a, it's about 20% exercise and 80% how you eat as far as how you look i mean there's so yeah. many wonderful things about exercise that i want i don't want to take that yeah. away but when people are trying to lose weight the diet is so important so exercise is too and now you know we talked we talked a little bit about some things like tabatas where you're burning loads of calories while you're doing these high intensity intervals and then you burn a whole lot of calories afterwards too so those type of workouts are very helpful for weight loss and showing more muscularity i love tabatas it's um hits it's high intensity interval training um you can find them on beth's youtube page and on facebook too yes on facebook too and and you guys you can look up tabatas and there are a million different kinds you can find one to music you like whether you like rock or, or oldies or country. I mean, that's the fun part of the class I take with Beth is that we do something different all the time. Sometimes she'll come in and she'll put, cause she likes country music and she'll put on and she'll teach us a bunch of country things. Um, but also a chair, something is, everybody has a chair in their house. So look at your dining room table, take out one of those chairs. Um, 
And we might not be like that girl who, what was the girl who danced in the chair and the water came splashing down on her? Yes. <laughs> but what can we do with the chair? So there are lots of things we can do with the chair. We can use it as our guide for squats. Uh, you can do push-ups on certain chairs. You can do. You can use the back of a chair for a little bit of balance to do all kinds of leg lifts. Yeah. And, and if you turn sideways to the chair so the back is on your side, you can actually use that almost as an ab machine. And also, one of one of our not our favorite exercise that you do for us, or that you have us do, is the stand, sit in the chair. See if I say this right. You sit in the chair and then with your arms in front of you, folded in front of you, you sit up, you stand up. But that means you have to use your core to stand up. You can't push yourself off with your hands. And then once you're up, then you start to sit down in the chair almost, but you don't quite let your butt touch the chair. And then you're back up again. And you repeat that for numerous times. And it is you know, especially for people as we start getting older. Um, I know I brought my mother-in-law, Janie, to you, or she wanted to come to you. And she said, I just want to always be able to get up and down out of a chair. And she had come to our very first exercise class in flip-flops. And Beth oh, said, yeah. you forgot your sneakers. She said, I don't own sneakers. <laughs> so she didn't really partake in our everyday two o'clock kick your butt class that Beth does, but she did come back because she wanted to always be able to t bend down and tie her shoes and sit and get up out of a chair. And that's the exercise you had her do, right? To get out of yes, a chair? Yes, yes. And that's, that's a really good point, Joan, is, you know, we talked about the reasons why we work out. You know, um, we, we spend billions of dollars a year in this country for all sorts of anti-aging remedies. Yeah but I don't know of any that work better than exercise. By the way, someone just reminded me, it was flash dance. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, so I have, um, and here's Leslie um, Wensley, Wensley saying yes to the soup cans and the chairs. All right, so Leslie, you've, you probably have soup cans. If you don't, maybe you've got some bottles of wine. Um, so um, someone else, Tony, come on, Tony Galati said, hey, I had jalapeno poppers for breakfast. Shame on me, ha <laughs> ha. <laughs> but you know, you even, so I was gonna say, so it's not a good thing that the other day I did a power walk jog for two miles, but when I came home, I had to do a, a Zoom conference with everybody from my office. So they caught me eating my Tostitos with my salsa. <laughs> I figured at least one canceled out the other. Yes, and that's another piece of the puzzle that you're doing there too, Joan, is making sure that we get our heart rate up. Mm -hmm. You know, we talked about Tabatas, but a lot of people, I mean, you might be 80, 90 years old, and walking is so wonderful, but we want to make sure we walk fast. Yeah. so walking should be a very big part, and hiking uh, can be a big part of your workout. No equipment needed. No, body. no equipment needed. Well, you need a hill for the for the hiking. But everybody, you know, I know out in California, I hear from a lot of you all the time from San Diego, LA, from Sacramento, my old hometown. And um, it's beautiful out there. I know there's a kind of a big storm that's moving across the country right now toward the east. I think it's might they might not even have sunshine completely down in Florida. But you know, on those days, and by the way, because here's something else we should mention, because you look outside and you say, ah, oh, man, it's raining, or in your case, Beth, it's snowing, so I can't work out today. That lies, <laughs> immediately Beth starts shaking her head, uh-uh. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's right. And, and, you know, another point to this too, Joan, is, uh, you know, we, you and me, love having workout buddies oh to me that's and, the, that's you know, the secret to me you know it is and we have we have fun we have buddies and we have great music yeah and there's no reason why you can't do that at home so let's say you decide that you're going to work out every day at eight o'clock you may be able to do a zoom or a facetime uh with a buddy and keep each other in alignment 
However, when you pick your buddies, whether it's a family member or a friend, be careful because you don't want to be the one that's always pulling the other one up the mountain. And it gets, very, it gets a little frustrating. So it's great to have common energy friends that you can hang yeah. out and work out with. It's really fun. Well, the way I won't know if it's say if it's really fun, but my workout buddy has of late been me in the mirror. Oh, you yes. <laughs> me in the mirror because I've been doing my 2020 in the bathroom. Um, and as soon as I said that to Beth, the first thing she said, with clothes or without clothes? <laughs> and I said, both. And on the days that I do it without clothes, it's very motivating to go out and do another power walk in the afternoon. <laughs> Listen, we have somebody here that says, uh, Joan's chair exercise uh, reminded me of something I heard Barbara Walters was told by her heart doctor that your thighs are maybe your most valuable thing to keep strong as you age. That's just so you can get in and out of bed, up and down out of a chair, so that you don't lose your ability just to keep walking, right? Yeah, and you know, it's another good thing to do for people too is get up and down off the floor. Oh, we always say, and you know this, we do exercises and she puts us through drills and we're great at them. But when she says, okay, get up, we're all like, oh, can't we just do all of our floor exercises while we're here on the floor and just get up once? But she purposely gets us up and down and up and down. <laughs> yeah, it's important. And I mean, if you ever, if somebody ever falls and they don't have the muscle or the uh, memory of how to get up, it, it, uh, it can be pretty dangerous. Yeah, somebody says, I agree with the workout buddies because one of us is kind of down. The other person is still going strong and they can shame us. That's really good. They can be our cheerleaders and can shame us. Here's uh, Candy Fox Merkin saying, I'm watching the winds blow all the new blossoms off my trees here in Owings Mill, Maryland. Um, another one says it's a little overcast here in Boynton Beach, but no rain yet. Oh, thanks for telling us about that. Um, here's one. Oh, J Jude Evans saying, Joan, you may have saved my life. I read your book, Had I Known, and therefore I got a biopsy yesterday. I'll get the results on Tuesday, but thanks for motivating me. Wow. Wow. That's really uh, great. Um, here's Cheryl talking to us from Cheryl and Cunningham. Posture is so very important throughout the day. I find myself hunching over uh, even a shopping cart. I have to remind myself to straighten up. You know, I've had two gurus in my life that have brought me to a healthy state. Um, Barbara Brandt, when I was younger, she's the one who put me through my first transformation. And, and then you, Beth, who I always say, you tell me what I need to hear and not what I want to hear. That's the sign of a true friend and, and a real mentor. Um, and Barbara Brandt, I remember, used to say to me, All, you're always gonna, once I get through with you, you're always gonna have your stomach, your abs, just a little bit sucked in. In other words, you're not gonna walk around with your belly hanging out. But the, and that's a great feeling, but the only way you can get that is to do sit-ups all the time, right? That's true. Yes, and you know, another another thing that's nice to do for your posture, uh, I do this with a lot of the men that I work out with, but some women too, is I have them walk with their hands either clasped behind their back or their elbows clasped behind their back. And it automatically oh. lifts their chest up. So they're walking with the arms behind and, yes. You know, I'm not saying do that all the time, but it makes a world of difference. I know after I you remember I broke my shoulder um, jumping my horse and coming back off that, I had to do all these things like walking your hand up the wall in the shower. But by the way, everyone, those are good things to do anytime, because if you get nothing out of this, please at least stretch for like five minutes, at least a day, five, 10 minutes. Otherwise you just start aching all over. 
Um, and I'm going to share, I'm, I'm going over in time, but I'm just going to share one thing. You're not going to believe what I'm going to share. So I have this tendency at night to put my arms back behind my head and I, I do it unconsciously. And when I do it and I, I walk around and my shoulders hurt me. So every time I see that I'm doing that, I pull them down and I, so one day, let me see, you told me to, how do we do this? Did we use pantyhose? Yeah, you tie, you tie your, you tie your arms to your legs with pantyhose. I, <laughs> well, I have to tell you guys, I did it and it worked. You also told me to put on like a, a snug shirt and then take my arms out and put my arms inside the shirt. And I'll bet you there's a bunch of women out there who do this and have sore arms and who are listening to it and you're going to do it and you're going to find out that this works. My husband thought I was like the biggest wackadoodle in the world when I did this. Oh, Beth told you to do this. I said, yep. And it worked. And I somehow, it's a habit. It's a habit. I slipped back it's into the habit. habit lately and, um, but it's really true. And, and Beth has us put our arms behind our back and clasp your hands and then kind of pull your shoulders back. As we get older, one of the first things that happens as we start aging is we get that slumping of the shoulders and it, it literally makes you look 10 years older. It, it seriously does. So try this every day, or you can um, find a corner in your room, put your hand, on the wall and then stretch this way but it's all to keep your shoulders and and when we start our workout class all the time you always start with our shoulders going back and out i mean all of that it's so important as we age to just keep limber everywhere and to keep and to not let ourselves start slumping inward you have to be conscious of it for sure yeah all right, so I've gone over, um, but I want to tell everybody that uh, this is, of course, Passover. This Sunday is Easter. Um, you can put a pretty colorful dress on, just stay home and FaceTime someone or Zoom someone. Um, and I want to tell you about who I'm going to have here on Monday. Um, I don't know if you've read any of the books by Harlan Coben. Um, his new book, uh, which just came out March 17th, called Boy from the Woods, uh, it came out and hit bestseller, New York Times bestseller lit, list immediately. He kind of goes back and forth with another great book, Where the Crawdads Sing. And um, I just love Harlan Coben. Jamie, my daughter Jamie is the one who has read every one of his books and she told me about him. I read one and then I just started reading all of them. But I read the book at the time, I think it was Tell No One, which is now, by the way, a Netflix series. He has about four show episodes, um, different shows. They are in like six or eight episodes. There's uh, Safe, there's Stranger, which is a cool book and a cool Netflix series. And I'll talk to him about that on Monday because he changed one of the characters from a male to a female, which was very interesting. Whoops, sorry. Um, this is my daughter, <laughs> probably asking for an iTunes card. Um, and uh, he's going to be with me. I tweet. I tweeted. I just finished Harlan Coben. Uh, tell no one. It's fantastic. And I looked all of a sudden in my messages, my private messages, and I saw this message from Harlan Coben saying, "Is this the real Joan London?" And I wrote him right back and said, "Is this the real Harlan Coben?" Anyway, I've come to know him. I went to the premiere of uh, The Stranger, which was really cool, having read the book. And um, so what, if you have nothing to do this uh, weekend, you know, look for some of the series on Netflix by Harlan Coben. And, um, and Monday I'm gonna get to talk to him. So that will really be a lot of fun right here on my live sessions at one o'clock. Beth, take care of yourself up there in that blizzard. You too, be, be safe and everybody be healthy and well and know that uh, we'll all get through this. Absolutely. Be well and be safe. Bye-bye. Whoops. Sorry. Look at this. I have my, I have one of those um, trays that you get served in bed. Oh, yoo-hoo. But there's nobody to come and serve me. <laughs> but it was a good place to like rest my elbow because it sometimes gets a little hard to hold that phone for 30 minutes. 
Um, all right, everybody, have a good weekend. Um, please stay home. Don't don't get you know sucked into the idea that oh it's Easter so I can just go somewhere just for now. Um, let's all stay home. Let's really obey these um, stay home rules as much as we can. Don't go out if you don't have a mask on and and gloves on. Um, and you know when you get home, take those groceries and use those wipes, Lysol everything down. Otherwise, you just don't know who might have touched something. I saw a nutritionist the other day saying, you got to have this rule. Whatever you touch in the grocery store is yours. You take it. Don't touch anything and then not take it. That's We've all got to kind of support each other right now. We're not just being safe for ourselves. We're being safe for the next person that comes along, you know, behind us. Um, and, you know, with Easter weekend and, you know, this is a time where you think about our world and our lives and our duty to the world and everybody else in our lives. So think about that. Keep, keep that at the forefront, that we're doing everything right now, not just for ourselves, but for everyone else that, you know, might come in contact with wherever we have been. So have a great weekend. See you Monday right here with uh, best-selling author uh, Harlan Coben. Have a wonderful Easter. Bye, everybody.